workshop about formal metric. Uh, this is now the session about formalizations and modeling. And it's a great pleasure to me to introduce Professor Stuart Shapiro. Uh, professor Shapiro is currently Professor Emeritus at uh, the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at the University of Buffalo. He is also affiliated as a professor of linguistics and a professor of philosophy. Uh, he got his education uh, from the MIT and the University of Wisconsin, so his undergraduate studies were in mathematics at the MIT. His graduate studies uh, at the University of Wisconsin in computer science, and he got also a PhD from the University of Wisconsin in computer science. He held various positions uh, as, for example, assistant professor, associate professor, full professor, acting chair, director, uh, and many other things, mainly at the University of Buffalo, but also he spends a certain time, for example, at Indiana University in Bloomington. Um, his main interests are artificial intelligence, cognitive science, computational linguistics, knowledge representation, reasoning, cognitive robotics, so more or less everything <laughs> is covered in his research. He published three authored books, five edited, he edited five books, he authored more than 30 journal papers, more than 40 book chapters and more than 60 conference proceedings and I don't count all the workshops proceedings <laughs> and all the other things. It's a great pleasure to have you here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome our speaker. The stage is yours. Thank you. Okay, blatant plug. Uh, so this is supposed to be a 20-minute talk. <laughs> if I do it from destroying the uh, equipment. And I'll also be giving a, a one-hour talk at tomorrow morning and a three-hour tutorial Saturday morning. The beginnings are, are the same, but the uh, carry-on is, is different. So. You're welcome to attend those also. Uh, so first, uh, I'll talk a bit about the architecture in general, and then get more specific about specifying modalities. So motivations for glare, as well as mglare, um, include um, adding, an acting, adding acting and sensing to a reasoning agent. Uh, so I'm basically a KR guy. Uh, and so I, I begin from the point of view, the, the position of, of working on reasoning agents, and I wanted to add acting and sensing to them. Uh, it's noteworthy that I'm talking about first-person reasoning. That is, I'm not axiomatizing a model of an agent, uh, but the beliefs of the system are the beliefs of an agent, not the beliefs about an agent. So if it doesn't know something, it's not there. Um, and also online acting and sensing. So it acts as it's, as it's <coughs> operating rather than building a plan for some, for some later execution. Uh, uh, this is a layered architecture, uh, but these layers are different from a lot of layered architectures. Uh, it's motivated by the mind-body connections and mind-body distinctions. Um, and we want to allow the same mind to be plugged into different bodies, which we have, in fact, done. So, uh, um, and another motivation is that of embodiment. That is, some beliefs come from sen sensation, including proprioception, rather than being told by some other person. Um, and agents have first-person privileged knowledge of their own bodies. You know you're sitting down right now because it's your body, and you can tell. You can feel it. Uh, and also the notion of situatedness, that is, the agent should have a sense of where it is in the world. Um, 
And finally, symbol grounding. Um, so symbol grounding in the body layer structures. Um, and I view a symbol as a pivot between various modalities. I'll get into that only very little in this talk. So that started out being the glare architecture, and then the M got, got added to it. The motivation for modalities is that modalities are independent, uh, but each is a limited resource. And the resources include the sensors and effectors of, of the agent slash robot. Um, and different modalities can be used independently without interfering with each other, but a single modality has a limited use. Uh, that's uh, our latest picture of the architecture. Uh, this, this, the circle the world is on, is on the outside here. Does this really work? Uh, hmm. uh, the world is out there, and, and this is the agent. The outermost layer, uh, the, or the lowest la layer, is the sensory actuator level, which contains the sensors and the effectors on a hardware robot. It's the actual hardware. Uh, uh, mechanisms. The perceptual motor layer um, we've divided into four different sublayers. The the lowest uh, PMLC abstracts the sensors and effectors uh, and uh, constitutes the body's behavioral repertoire. And the PMLC layer is specific to the body implementation, whether it's a software agent or a hardware robot. PMLB handles translation and communication between uh, the higher PML layers and the PMLC. And the PMLB is the highest layer that knows the body implementation. So when we move a mind to a different body, uh, we only have to change PMLB and below. Everything above that stays the same. The PMLS um, grounds the uh, uh, knowledge layer symbols uh, in perceptual structures. This is the lowest layer, it and its, its uh, other sublayer, PMLA, is the lowest layer that knows the KL terms. So the lower layers don't know how things are being represented at the, at the knowledge layer. Um, and it contains registers for embodiment and situatedness, which I'm not really going to talk about uh, this week. <laughs> PMLA is the other half layer uh, in here, um, and that's for effectors. It grounds the primitive actions of the knowledge layer um, into an implementation, and with PMLS, it's the lowest layer that knows the KL terms. Um, and this also has these registers, which I'm not going to talk about. Uh, finally, the, the highest or innermost uh, layer is the knowledge layer. Since I'm a KR guy at heart, this is where most things are going on. It's implemented in SNEPs, uh, the knowledge representation and reasoning system uh, that we've developed in Buffalo. Um, it contains the agent's beliefs, uh, representations of entities that the agent has conceived of, uh, semantic memory, episodic memory, uh, quantified and conditional beliefs or rules, if, if you will, or quantified uh, formulas, plans for non-primitive acts, plans to achieve goals, beliefs about preconditions and effects of acts, uh, policies, what I call policies, which are conditions under which acts should be performed, um, self-knowledge, uh, and meta-knowledge. And obviously, I'm not going to cover all of this, this today or even this week. Um, so now start looking at modalities. The afferent modalities uh, handle the sensors. So information moves from the sensors to uh, what I call perceptual structures, uh, to perception, uh, and finally to KL terms. I'll say more about this in a moment. And efferent modalities, going out the other side, um, grounds um, the primitive acts at the knowledge layer to methods implemented at in the PMLA to act impulses and eventually down to effectors that actually do something. Uh, the symbol ground, grounding um, is what we call alignment. So at the, at the afferent uh, side, objects or phenomena in the world uh, are sensed, turned into PMLS structures eventually, 
and perceived as uh, uh, terms in the mind, thing in action, I just changed the order of some slides, so that doesn't mean anything yet. Um, on the efferent side, actions, specifically primitive acts at the knowledge layer, are implemented as PMLA methods uh, and eventually lead to actions uh, in the world, real or simulated. Now, we need to make uh, distinctions among these three different things. So there's, there are objects in the world, clearly, like us, right? Um, there are terms at the knowledge layer represented in the SNAPS representation language. So B4 is a symbolic, is a logical constant term. Uh, the question is, what does that term denote? Does it denote the object in the world? I don't think so, not, not in my view. Uh, the term denotes the agent's mental entity. So it, this is the term that the agent uses to think about, in this case, Stu. Okay? So it, there's not a question of it's denoting the object in the world, but it represents or denotes this intentional entity, uh, which is something it can think about. Uh, speaking of mental entities, uh, there is an ontology so everything represented at the knowledge layer is an entity, and that includes propositions. Um, so propositions are entities in the domain, which is the domain of mental entities, that an agent can believe or uh, whose negation the agent can believe, and it includes quantified and conditional beliefs. Uh, there are acts. Um, uh, an act is something the agent can perform. Um, there are policies which are condition act rules that an agent can adopt. Um, and everything else is a thing. And things include actions, what some agent can perform on some objects, categories or classes of entities, um, and other entities, including individuals, properties, times, etc. anything that the agent can conceive of other than, uh, one, uh, other than propositions, acts, and policies just lumped together into things for now. Um, OK, slow down. So now, now I'm getting to the specifying modality uh, part. Um, and this is brand new work by uh, John Bona, my co-author, who's uh, uh, hopefully about to finish his, his PhD. And he's been in charge of effecting the addition, the formal addition of the M to the m glare architecture. Um, and so for him, a modality is a nine-tuple, uh, including a name, a type that is afferent or efferent, or maybe some subtype of those, um, some predicates that are, are KL terms uh, that are used by the modality, a channel that is used for communication between the PMLB and PMLC layers, um, Rules for accessing whether or not the agent can consciously think about this modality. Uh, a focus level, which I'll say more about. There's a default level. Uh, uh, per, the agent could be either permitted or forbidden from, forbidden from adjusting the focus. Uh, conflict rules for what to happen if, uh, for example, in an efferent modality, if if the agent tries to perform multiple acts in the same modality. Uh, uh, just a human readable description, which is just a comment, um, and relations that it might have to other modalities. So let me get more specific about some of these. Um, so in afferent modalities, a knowledge layer primitive act that is, an act the agent can perform, but not think about how it's performing it. Okay, so that's what, what a primitive act is, something that can be performed, but performed not consciously. Um, and these KL primitive acts are implemented uh, by PMLA methods or functions or routines, what have you. Um, and the PMLA method to be executed is added as an act impulse to a buffer in its appropriate modality. So each act, each primitive act implementation is associated with a modality. When it's going to perform, it adds uh, uh, an impulse to its modality buffer. 
Um, efferent modality buffers, uh, as I just said, they're um, operated on at the PMLB layer of the efferent modality. Um, it has a fixed capacity or expiration interval, depending on the, what the agent architecture uh, decides. Um, a new act uh, impulse is either queued onto the buffer or perhaps replaces old impulses uh, that haven't been uh, performed yet. If an impulse arrives that can't fit in the buffer, uh, then what happens is determined by the conflict handler for this modality. Uh, if an impulse is discarded from the buffer, then it's just never done, period. Um, uh, impulses removed by the buffer management process are then processed in the PMLC. So they get added into the buffer at the PMLB. Uh, they might or might not stay in the buffer until they're finally removed and, and acted on in the PMLC. Uh, perceptual or afferent buffers go the other way. Um, uh, they're in the PMLB of the afferent modality. Uh, perceptual uh, structures or sensory data is queued into these buffers. Again, they have a fixed capacity or an expiration interval. Uh, when structures arrive that can't fit, either it is discarded or the oldest um, structure still in the buffer is discarded to make room for it, depending on what the agent architecture, architect decides. Um, and it's specified in the conflict handler. Once again, discarded structures are never perceived. They may be sensed, but they're not perceived uh, if they're discarded from the buffer. Uh, structures removed by the buffer management process are given to some perceptual function or perceptual method whose job at the PMLS is to translate the PML structure into KL terms, thus perceiving whatever was sensed. Okay, and the strict distinction between sensing and perception. And these perceptual functions are specific to each afferent modality. Uh, the input, as I just said, is a PML structure representing what was sensed, and the output is one or more knowledge layer terms representing what was perceived. I mentioned focus, that each afferent modality can be given a default focus and rules about how to use it. The focus affects the frequency of execution of the internal processes. So this is all implemented in some concurrent or parallel set of, of threads or, or, or tasks. Um, the focus level can go to ignore everything in this, in this, buff, in this buffer and this modality. Uh, or a maximal focus, or and somewhere anywhere in between. Um, it's initially at the default setting, and the agent might be permitted to adjust this so that, again, uh, de decided by the agent architect, uh, the agent might or might not be able to consciously focus more on one of its afferent modalities than, than others. Um, the agent might miss perceiving phenomena in low focus modalities because it's just so involved in, in the higher focused modalities. Uh, um, so it's important to adjust the relative focus of different modalities appropriately. Consider watching the ro road versus talking on a cell phone. If you've got all your focus on talking on the cell phone, then you might crash. Right? which is why it's becoming illegal in many places to talk on a cell phone while driving. Um, and that's it. Uh, so to summarize, Emglair adds acting and sensing to reasoning agents. Uh, the layers capture the mind-body distinction and the mind-body connection. So it's my solution to the mind-body problem, or our solution in the group. Modalities are independent of each other, but each one is a limited resource uh, for acting and sensing. Uh, the modality buffers cue act impulses and afferent structures, but discard ones that are not processed. The focus level determines how much a modality is ignored. And that's it. For more information, see our websites. This is 
This is my homepage, and this is my research group's homepage. Thank you.